welcome to the Czechia Fedora before going out or how we validate Fedora. Uh, it's uh, a talk uh, about validation and release testing. So uh, the validation tests are used to check the overall quality of Fedora and uh, they have basically the following features. We define them in release validation test plan. Uh, the link to it is over there if you are interested. Uh, uh, they have or they are part of uh, Fedora release criteria. We automate some of them. Some of them must be performed manually. Uh, they run for each build and uh, there are several fields of interest that we do and uh, we put the results into test matrices. I'm going to show you uh, the stuff. Uh, there are every day, there is a night build of Fedora. So uh, the new version gets built and published and tests are performed. Ideally, all tests would be performed on the nightly build, but because we cannot do it as there are not many people doing it. Uh, usually only automated tests run every day. Uh, the tests are in groups, installation, base, desktop, server, and cloud. How do they vary? So one test, <laughs> it is not just one test, but there is one test and it has different varieties. So actually one test could be tested on different installation media, either on ISO, USB, or even CD. We still uh, sometimes test CDs. The architecture is important, whether it's bare metal or in a virtual machine, whether it runs on BIOS or a UFI, whether the test is blocking, or not blocking, and uh, some more variations. We test for different milestones too. Uh, there is the alpha quality, which uh, I have heard that now we are going to, to coin a term, always ready rawhide, which means that you can be on rawhide and it will not break, at least not terribly break. And, um, this is, or some part of the goal has been already achieved by automated testing every day. Uh, then there is the beta milestone and the file mil final milestone. And uh, the, the release criteria are different for alpha, for beta, and final. Uh, each of the following includes the previous. So if the release criteria for alpha that we call basic, is not met, then of course beta is not met and final is not met. But when basic is met and beta is met, then final might be also met, unless there is some other problem. Always ready rawhide has alpha quality, but as I said, the alpha quality should be, should be usable. Uh, Mostly new versions of packages are tested uh, in Bodhi, for example, and users can give them karma. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether you know Bodhi or not, but uh, uh, you can, if there, is an, if there is a package and you are interested in the package, you can open it, you can give it karma, write some comments. If it doesn't work, you can give it negative karma. If the package receives three positive karmas, then it will be uh, pushed to stable. If it doesn't receive any karma, uh, it will wait for one week, I think, and then it's pushed to stable automatically. Uh, this is probably what the majority of packages tend to do. Like they are pushed to stable automatically because nobody gives karma. Uh, then, of course, this leads sometimes to problems that a package 
appears unstable uh, with some problems that could have been caught uh, during the testing stage. If you are interested in testing it, then uh, you just switch on the updates testing repository and all testing packages are there. So you install them through that repository and then you might uh, send karma. One negative karma negates everything. So if there is one negative karma, the update will not be pushed to stable. So it's good if you catch a problem on uh, Rawhide or even uh, Fedora 36, Fedora release uh, updates, and you want to prevent the update from coming into stable, just give it a negative karma if you can. Then uh, twice a year, there, there is the Fedora release twice a year. So uh, there is a special time that's, uh, that's called branching out of Fedora. Fedora gets branched and uh, we prepare the beta release, which basically is the beta freeze. Then uh, in beta freeze, no updates are taken into, into the release anymore unless uh, they, are, they have blocker status or they have uh, uh, freeze exception status. Uh, intense testing begins because uh, we try to do as much testing as possible, not just automated, but also manual. And then uh, when we think it's uh, almost good, we create a release candidate and we vote whether the release candidate is go or no go. Uh, community can take part on each of those steps. Uh, there are meetings. Uh, there are talks, discussions, and uh, anybody is invited to, to join the meeting. So if you think that, uh, uh, that you need to say something and then that you have some remarks or requirements, you can just uh, appear on those meetings. They usually happen over, over IRC on Libera chat. The same holds true for final, except that uh, the intense t testing is even more intense. And uh, usually this is uh, when we discover the, the most uh, terrible bugs. And uh, then Fedora releases uh, get, get delayed. The release criteria are basic, beta, or final, uh, I will just uh, give you some overview. For example, uh, here there is a, oh, it's not there yet. Not there yet. So um, maybe Fedora 36, yes. So. Uh, here you can see, for example, the beta release criteria. Uh, for example, what working sound. One of the criteria is that the installed system must be able to play back sound with GStreamer based applications. Uh, we usually take that like it must be able to play sound. So if your system doesn't play sound on beta, uh, it's bad and uh, that is a no-go. Uh, and if it's on beta, it means it's on final too. So if uh, the release doesn't play sound, then uh, you can't release Fedora. Uh, the tests are defined by those release criteria. So we usually have a test case described how you should set the environment, how you should perform the test, and what are the expected results. So if you want to perform the test, you can, you just follow the instructions, and uh, at the end you know audio works or it doesn't. So if it works, you just say, yeah, I think the test is passed because audio works. If it doesn't, you report bug and uh, 
you uh, tell that or you say that uh, it doesn't work. Uh, when we, for example, take a look uh, on the installation test metrics, so it looks like this. Uh, you can see that uh, there are cells. Uh, okay, Th this might be a little bit funny for you uh, or for people who are used to use some uh, some framework to, to do testing. Uh, it's, uh, the problem with Fedora is that uh, one of the rules of Fedora is that everything that uh, is used to produce Fedora must be open source. So uh, there is not a, a test framework that would be open source and suitable for what we have here at the Wiki. So uh, it's a problematic thing because we somehow think like we need to deploy a test framework and we should modernize and uh, nothing is available and uh, we don't have the time to, to program something by ourselves. This has been working for years and it's, it's good. It does the job, but it's, you know, somehow somehow very, you know, beginners-like or something, but it does its job. So you can see that uh, some of the tests are already filled in. Uh, these are from the 27th uh, May, so the, the, this was the 27th May night build, and you see that most of the tests are performed by the coconut user. The, the coconut user is the automation tool that does the automated testing. And uh, <laughs> there, is a, there is a joke about its name. Uh, when uh, it was deployed for the first time, the idea was that we will go somewhere, sit on the beach and drink uh, coconut liquors. Uh, that doesn't happen. Uh, but the bot is named coconut. So you see that most of the of the activities between releases are performed by the automated, automated bot. Uh, the problem, if it's uh, in the release crit criteria, so if the release criteria is not met, then uh, we call it its release blocking, and that means you can't release Fedora with this issue in it. Uh, currently, this is the list of the blocking stuff. Workstation is blocking, server is blocking, cloud, KDE. Uh, for ARM, it's the minimal Fedora or the XFCE. Uh, and uh, the blocker bug process, of course, is the process when we discuss the bugs, if they break criteria or not, and whether they are release blocking or not. So sometimes it's like somebody reports, I have this fancy laptop uh, with uh, a fancy sound card and there is no sound. And we say, okay, uh, what about Lenovo laptops? Sound okay, Dell sound okay. The majority of the, of the laptops are fine. Most of the users report it's fine. So we think this is not as severe as to block on this. And uh, it's not release blocking, although for that user it's a problem. The results are written in the metrics. Uh, we talked about this. Uh, the release is ready when all blocking tests have passed and no other serious issues have been found. Anything else does not matter. And this is uh, important. Uh, when the following does not work, we still do the release. For example, unsupported hardware, third-party applications or non-blocking desktop environments or non-blocking Fedora flavors, if there is a bug in it, we still do the release. Uh, it sometimes bites us terribly 
it bites the other team also because uh, they say like, oh, we don't feel like we should be blocking, we don't want to be blocking, so we don't care. We don't have time to do non-blocking stuff usually. And then they say, oh wait, silver blue doesn't work, it's terrible, there is such a huge bug, how come you didn't uh, notice? Well, we didn't because we were doing Fedora workstation which was blocking and not silver blue that was not blocking. But there are of course risks that uh, that we need to access somehow. There is one fixed workflow because the automation only performs the test the only single way, all the time. Limited hardware. Red Hat employees usually receive Lenovo laptops, no problems on that. If there are problems, we find it, but not on other laptops because I don't have 10 laptops at home, for example. Uh, much more virtualized tests, of course, nobody wants to reinstall the system all the time. Or uh, lack of resources and little coverage for non-blocking parts of Fedora, which is what we discussed a little bit earlier. Uh, this is the F35 statistics taken from the heroes of Fedora. Heroes of Fedora is sort of who did what and how many people did what and there is a there is a, you know, like a, the first place, the second place, the third place, and so. So the, the for F35 beta, there were, there were only 12 testers doing the stuff, this release validation stuff. They did almost 500 tests. Uh, the most active tester, one of them, uh, did 164. So in average, it was 40. And for final, it was 21 testers, so which is a little better. But then they did only 35 tests in average. The most active tester, by the way, which was the same one, did 216 tests. And it wasn't me, of course. Uh, so we need you. Fedora needs you. And you need to test with us. Or go against us or you know uh, please the only thing you need to do is use Fedora and use it early use it since beta and uh, just use your favorite applications and whenever you spot an issue think about those release criteria. if it's blocking let us know if you think it's fine if there is the test case if we have it in the matrices Please fill it in and report bugs. And uh, if you do this, then we will know about the bugs and we will have enough time to fix it. Uh, if we don't know about this, maybe it will not be found. Maybe it will, too late. Maybe it won't. You know, so um, if you want, please join. Uh, you can contact uh, anyone from the Fedora QA team for example, come to Fedora slash QA at Libera Chat. Uh, you could block, uh, report blocker bugs and vote for them if you want it. And remember that the coconut does a lot, but it can't do anything. Uh, if you want to start somewhere, it's the release validation test plan. Uh, you can read about how we do the release validation and where to join. And uh, the last thing is, especially for people who are like, what we hear is, you know, I am not that experienced in Linux. Of course you all are, but maybe your friends aren't. Uh, if somebody is not that experienced in Linux, it's a perfect stuff to get more expertise because we have those cases and they are described a step by step what to do and it's commented so uh, if those people test like uh, let's test LVM how we do LVM they might learn how to do LVM using our tests and they can learn about Linux okay thank you very much questions do you have uh, do, do you test uh, uh, upgrade procedure because I know uh, guys sometimes have uh, problems with drivers on 
uh, uh, Lenovo with uh, when upgrade from old version to new version. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we do. The problem is uh, it's here. It's for the upgrade milestone beta test, ca test case upgrade GNOME software, current workstation, and previous workstation. What we do is we test upgrades. The problem is, uh, and we test the current workstation, which is like F36. So we will test updates from F36 to F37, and we will test upgrades uh, from F35 to F37. Mm -hmm. The problem is I have two laptops, yeah. and I use a limited set of packages on them because I am keen in some applications, and I don't care for the rest of them, and I don't have them installed, so I only see one and two real cases of upgrade. That's the same for my colleague, that's the same for another one. So we might see like 20 or 25 different upgrades, and they all pass. Sometimes they don't. Coconut uses a fresh installation of F35, for example, so it installs the F35, it updates it to the latest uh, state of packages using DNF update or something, and then it uh, either uses the GNOME software or DNF to upgrade to 36 or the, the 37, the, the new release. And that's mostly fine because there are no problematic packages on a fresh installation. So this is exactly the case where we need people from the community to say, I have this, it doesn't work, uh, maybe it's this package, or I get this package is uh, doing problems. DNF, by the way, reports nicely which package is the culprit, why it can't upgrade. Yeah, NVIDIA drivers are a problem for everybody because NVIDIA doesn't uh, want to uh, give their drivers to the open source community. So, uh, th and it's, therefore it's not blocking, so we can't do anything about it. Uh, what I recommend is if the Nuvo drivers work for you, use them. Instead, if you don't need the, the NVIDIA, like the full scale of NVIDIA. Uh, and then it's mostly fine. Yeah. But now maybe somebody, uh, I, I read an article about NVIDIA giving something uh, like a core module being open source. Maybe it will help the situation, but yeah. NVIDIA uh, drivers might be a problem, and this is what we uh, as Fedora cannot fix. So, okay, I think uh, that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>